Hello everyone, my name is Zhang Yachen. I work for Baidance STE team. Hi, I'm Yong Jixie. I also work for Baidance STE team. Our topic today is about the high availability features for virtual IBIS. The topic will be divided into four parts. First, I want to introduce some background of this work. Next, I'll be talking about three high availability features including crash recovery, live upgrade, and live migration. Finally, I will talk about the status of the features and the, the possible future work. Okay, let's start with the background of this talk. Virtual FS, uh, as most of you may have heard of, is a host to virtual machine guest pass-through file system. It is first introduced in 2018 as a substitution of Fertile 9P, and it has better local FS semantics and better performance. It also actively developed by many open open source communities, like Linux kernel, QEMU, Kata containers, and Libboard. If you, if you are interested, you can find more introduction about Fertile FS in its website. The basic usage of virtual FS is to avoid the file copying if we want to share some files or a directory into the guest VM. And in the cloud environment, the most promising usage is to serve the secure containers. For example, Kata containers is one of the secure container runtimes. Basically, as shown in this figure, Secure containers invoked by Kata runtime is sandboxed by a virtual machine. And if the virtual machine is booted with the virtual FSD, we can directly pass through files from host to guest, and it will save the time and space for booting a secure container. There are more possible usage for virtual FS. Just like many user-based file systems based on fields, the virtual FS daemon can also be implemented as other customized form. For example, we may implement distributed client as a virtual FS daemon. We can also implement more efficiency container image services. There is also an excellent, excellent talk in KVM Forum 2019. You can find out more ideas about the virtual FS usage in it. Now, Back to our topic today, what is high availability and where we need it for virtual FS? As you may already know that high availability features is a type of technologies to, emil to eliminate the single point of failure of large systems. For virtual FS, the features include crash recovery, life upgrade, and life migration. However, the virtual FS statement today does not support any of these features. That means when the virtual FS daemon crashes, the whole virtual machine will be unavailable. And there is also a conception to measure the high availability of a system, mean time to failure. If the virtual FS D does not support any of these features, the overall mean time to failure of a virtual machine would be bottlenecked by the virtual FSD. Therefore, we decided to implement some of the high availability features for virtual FS. Now, I'd like to move on to the second part of this talk. How can we support crash recovery for virtual FS? First of all, there is an assumption of the crash. The crash failure model is fail stop. It means the virtual FSD could be uh, mistakenly killed by other process, or killed by the kernel out of memory killer, or just crashes for other reasons like segmentation faults. The fail stop model here means uh, when an internal or external error happens, instead of running for a while and an exit, the virtual SD process will be killed immediately. This assumption can cover most of the online crash crisis cases, and no further internal states will be mistakenly modified 
by an error handling and running program. The graph on the left shows a virtual machine running with virtual FSD. There are two communication channels between the queue email and the virtual FSD. First, the fuse requests are continuously transferred from the guest to virtual FSD through virtual O transport. Virtual FSD handles the fuse request by further request the host file system. Second, as the virtual FSD is a WeHost user service daemon, there is also a Unix domain socket connection between QEMU and virtual FSD. For crash recovery of virtual FSD, the most intuitive thing you may thought of is that we need a supervised processor to keep watching the virtual FSD. The supervised process could be Kata Container Runtime or some, some other system service managers like a System D. When the, uh, when the virtual FSD crashes, the supervised process will notice the process is killed and restart a new virtual FSD. Additionally, as virtual FSD is a WeHost user device, QEMU will keep trying to reconnect to the new WeHost user socket when a new virtual FSD is restarted. Once we have a supervised process to restart the new uh, virtual FSD, the next thing we need to pay attention to is how to resubmit the in-flight requests. For the virtual FS requests, the guest kernel is waiting for the completion in an uninterruptible state. So if we simply drop the in-flight request, the guest will blocking on the unfinished I.O. So we must resubmit an unfinished fuse request. Fortunately, there is uh, already an in-flight I.O. tracking feature in WeHost user protocol. This is because in-flight I.O. tracking and resubmission is a common issue for WeHost user service crash recovery. And it is also first introduced for WeHost user block service. As shown in the left figure, the feature basically reserves a range of log area shared between the WeHost user daemon and the queue email. The log will be recording the in-flight word queue descriptors. And if a crash happens, queue email will send back the log back to the new word FSD. And the in-flight request will be resubmitted. However, there is a dependent issue for the in-flight request rehandling. This is because the fuse request handler may crash in the middle of an execution and will leave some residual internal states of virtual SD. So we need to ensure the, for every uh, request handler that would be re executed, they must be adapted. I will come back to this issue later in this talk. But now let's just move on. The last thing we need to think about about the crash recovery is how to save and restore the internal status of Virtual SD. Virtual SD has two kinds of internal states, the in-memory states and the file descriptors opened on behalf of the guest applications. As shown in the figure, we need a persistent data store for the two kinds of internal states. In the implementation, we store the in-memory states to the shared memory files with a MAP-friendly data structure called fleet map. For the open FD states, we save the FDs as file handles by using two system calls called open by handle -right and name to handle -right. The general idea of internal state saving and restoring is straightforward. We just saved the states when they are updated and restore the states when recovering. With all the components ready for the crash recovery feature, let's just review the overall procedure of virtual SD crash recovery. First, the supervisor of the process will detect virtual SD failure and restart a new virtual SD. Second, the new virtual SD will restore its internal states from the persistent data store and then listen on the uh, WeHost user socket. Third, QEMU will reconnect to the new virtual FSD, reset up the WeHost user state like virtual machine memory layout 
word queue address and send the in-flight I/O tracking log back to the VertFSD. First, the new VertFSD will rehandle the in-flight fuels request from the in-flight I/O tracking log. Finally, the new VertFSD will start to handle the new normal fuels request from the VM guest. Okay, now let's go into more deeper about how can we store the internal states of VertFSD. First, for the in-memory states, we propose a new data structure called fleet map. The fleet map is based on the QEMU VertFSD struct low map. But as shown in this figure, it is more map friendly. We embed element data into slots instead of dynamically allocating and attaching them to pointers. We also attach the elements to the end of the map meta fields. The crash consistency issue on the fleet map updating is also properly handled. To save the open FD of VertFSD, we use the persistent fail handle mechanism provided by host fail system. We use two system calls and save the open FD of VertFSD to host kernel by name to handle it and restore them by open by handle it when performing recovery. Let's go back to the Adamantan problem when we resubmit the in-flight request. The Adamantan here means if we uh, execute a same request multiple times, it will always produce the same output. But if a fuse request is uh, non in uh, Adamantan, it would leave some residual states in VertFSD. So we need to ensure every fuse request is adamantant. We analyze the fuse request handlers one by one, and there is three situations for achieving this. First, some of them are already adamantant, so we don't need to change anything of them. And some of them are relatively easy to modify. We only need to relax some error handling in the VertFSD handler. And the other requests are more complicated. We need to introduce journaling to automatically change the internal states. Next, I'd like to give some examples of these situations. The first kind of request is a dependent request. We don't need any special handling of this request. For example, the app allocate fuels request just extends or removes or fail range from the offset with a length size. Because F allocate this call itself is adamantant, and there is no internal state changed in the F allocate fuse handler. So the F allocate request itself is totally adamantant. The second type of request needs some special handling. For example, the make DIR fuse request will call make DIR add this call to create a new directory. But if we execute the same request the second time, we can be sure that make the error at this call will fail with e exist error. So if we crash if the crash happens after make the error at, when this request re-executed as an in-flight request, it would be an e exist error. To solve this problem, we relax the error handling of this kind of request. For the MakeDIR request, the MakeDIR add system call fails with error number E exist. It will return success to guest kernel directly. It should be known that this modification is safe because guest kernel should already check the existence of the directory by the fuse lookup request before the make DIR request. So if we return to guest application without even send the make DIR request, if there should be an E exist error number. With the relaxed error handling, the make DIR handler is more adamant now. The last and the most complicated situation is the request that need journaling. For example, the forget request, it will change the internal state of the VertFSD. 
As I mark the right in this figure, the forget request will decrease the end lookup counter by one. So if we crash after the after the decreasement, the rehandling of this request will decrease it again. So the end lookup counter would be decreased by two. That will called unrecoverable internal error. It is an inconsistency. So it is not acceptable for us. And to solve this problem, we introduce a lightweight journaling mechanism. Before it decreases the end lookup counter, the old I value will be recorded to the journal. And re when recovering, the journal entry of in flight requests will be rolled back at first. With lightweight journaling, the forget request is a debitant now. To minimize the downtime of crash recovery, we also did some optimizations. For example, the upstream version QEMU will keep trying to reconnect to WeHost user service socket with second level interval. We make some changes to QEMU to support millisecond level reconnection. And we also delay the restoring of open file descriptors from file handles. The virtual FSD only restores and fail open file, file descriptors from its file handle when the file is first accessed. We test the virtual FS service downtime with FIO, with one file, 100 files, and 1,000 files opened. As we can see in the figure, without the two optimizations, the recovery downtime is at least 100, one, one second. With optimization 1, we can achieve the recovery time within one second. And with optimization 2, we can further reduce the downtime to less than 100 milliseconds. Okay, thanks Jia Chen for the great uh, presentation before. Next, let me show our works on WatchFS level upgrade and level migration. For WatchFS level upgrade, actually we can achieve it through crash recovery. Why we need another wheel? The main reason is to reduce the downtime as much as possible. In our test, the vehicle's user renegotiation has a significant impact on downtime, especially when there are a lot of water queues. So we'd like to get rid of the vehicle's user negotiation during live upgrade. And another reason is that we'd like to get rid of the inflated I/O replay, which makes things complicated. To implement this feature of WatchFS, we first need a communication channel between WatchFD and the supervisor process to launch a live upgrade. This can be achieved by QMP or something similar. And we also need uh, to save and restore the internal state, such as the memory and the open file descriptors. But compared with the crash recovery, this now can be inherited from the older WatchFSD in some ways. At last, we need to find a point to stop the older WatchFSD, flush the infinite IOS, and start the IO process in the new process. With these steps, we can upgrade the WatchFSD without the user negotiation and the infinite IO replay. And for WatchFS line migration, it's also an important feature. Currently, we cannot migrate a VM with WatchFS enabled. This limits the user case of WatchFS. So we did some works which try to enable migration with shared backend. Then, how to achieve that? Firstly, QEMU needs to support save and load the device states of vhost user FS. Secondly, the internal states should be migrated to the target load. For the in-memory states such as flat map, we can send them directly back to the device states. But for the open file descriptors, since the backend FS would change to another host, we cannot use file handles anymore. We must reconstruct those information on the target host. And we also need to handle kernel case such as open or link and atomic open. Finally, the infinite IO needs to be handled. We can choose to join infinite IOs in source host or we submit the infinite IOs in destination. Now, the 
the RFC participate on class recovery feature was sent to QML stream last year. And we got a lot of valuable suggestions from the community. And for the futures, firstly, we are going to post the version 2 of PatchSet to QML stream recently. Then, we will try to enable those futures for the Rust version watch FSD. Lastly, we will do some works to support it in Rust VM and hypervisors. Okay, that's all for today's talk. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for your attention.